Happy Lord's Day po sa bawat isa. Magandang araw po. Pagpalain po tayo ng ating Panginoon Diyos sa uh, araw pong ito na ating sama-samang pananambahan. Sa buong buwan pong ito, we started uh, work, walking through po patungkol ho sa kung anong ibig sabihin na maging tagasunod ng ating uh, Panginoong Jesus dito po sa KBCF. At sa nakaraang pong uh, tatlong linggo, uh, we kinover ho natin ang ilang mga foundational truths for our church family. And in those messages po, ay uh, in-encourage po natin ang bawat isa, ang, mga, ang ating pong mga membro during the, this uh, uh, period to spend time considering intentionally na paano ho tayo lalago bilang mga tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo bilang uh, mamalakaya ng tao, a fisher of men na binigyan din po ni Pastor June bilang mga saksi na binigyan din po ni Bishop F at uh, to give yung ating pong buhay for making disciple of Jesus na binigyan din po ng diin ni Elder Sito. Make disciples that make, who makes disciple. Ang aking pong dalangin na ang bawat membro po ng KBCF will do that during this period of time. At habang ating pong isinasagawa ito individually and corporately, hanggang sa mga susunod pong mga linggo at mga araw at panahon, we are going to walk through how does it affect ang ating pong buhay na magkakasama bilang isang covenant community, bilang isang iglesia at bilang tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Jesus. What it does mean for us as a community of faith. Kaya ho ngayon, nais ko pong pasimulan ang ating pong pag-aaral na ito at uh, naway maging malinaw po sa bawat isa po sa atin, sa mga sa elders, sa leaders, sa members ng iglesyang ito because it sums up who we are, what we do, and what we are about in one sentence. And that is, we are here to glorify God by making disciples of all nations. Samahan niyo po ako sa paglapit sa ating Panginoon Diyos. Tayo po ay humingi ng kanyang uh, pagpapala, ng kanyang tulong. Tayo po ay manalangin. Dakila namin Diyos, maraming pong salamat sa inyong salita. We ask that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. At puso, Panginoon, na naniniwala sa iyong mapagpalang at mabiyayang salita na kayo ang mangungusap sa amin. We ask that your Holy Spirit be we would see how your truth is meant to address us, Panginoon, to rebuke us, to correct us, to edify us, to equip us for the living of the Christian life. Iniling namin, Panginoon, sa pamagitan ng iyong banal espiritu ay mabuksan ang aming mga mata to behold wonder, the wonderful truth mula sa iyong salita, Panginoon that you would exalt Christ in our hearts in and by your word and spirit and that you would receive all the glory for it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Minsan, isang linggo po, ang isang pastor ay nagpasimula po ng kanyang pangaral sa pagsasalita na nais ko magbigay ng tatlong puntos sa aking sermon ngayong araw na ito. Una, there are millions of people around the world who are going to go to hell. Pangalawa, ang sabi ho niya, most of us sitting here today don't even care about that. And after a lengthy pause, nagpatuloy po siya. Ang, pangot, ang pangatlo kong puntos ay that you are more concerned that I, your pastor, said the words you don't even care than you are about the millions going to hell. Mas concern kayo doon sa sinabi kong you don't even care kaysa sa isang milyon na pupunta sa impyerno. Posible ho ba na ang bawat isa po sa atin ay maisagawa kung ano po ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoong Kristo sa kanyang salita to penetrate a family, a community in 
na kung saan tayo po ay namumuhay, following yung kanya pong instruction in order to advance the gospel and make the disciples among people groups kung saan tayo po ay naninirahan and kung saan tayo papunta o pwedeng humayo. I, I want to suggest to you this morning that just maybe that it is simple if we get that this strategy begins with and is driven by prayer. Nang panalangin. So the question on our table is, why pray? Bakit? Bakit kailangan tayo manalangin? At hayaan po natin ang banal ako sa na sagutin ang ating pong katanungan na yan. And I want us to do, let Jesus speak into that question with this word, yes. Yes, we must pray but why pray? And in order to mobilize laborers with the gospel of Christ sa task na ito na ipinagkatiwala niya po sa atin, sa vision na ito that we are on. And so the primary focus that we are thinking about here is that God is sovereignly bound the gospel advancement to the mobilizations of laborers in answer to prayer. Isa ho sa akin po mga panalangin that we would make some connection with these things that we are familiar with. We, we know that we should do the aspects of why we've been left dito sa planetang ito. Bakit nandito pa ho tayo? So that we can see that God is not just made a suggestion. Hindi lang po nagbigay ng mungkahi. So His John ang ating Panginoong Diyos. He has not just giving as another spiritual discipline to practice. Subalit ho sa katotohanan, He has in His sovereignty about bound, bound certain things to the activity of prayer. That if we would not connect these two things and practice prayer in a context of those things, we will not be able to do them effectively and bring honor and glory to His name. We, we come to a subject po sa umaga pong ito na alam ko pong malapit, near and dear to our hearts as a congregation bilang KBCF. And this is what we are about. We are about the mobilization of laborers to take the gospel to the nations. And our Lord would have us to know that we will never able to do this to the greatest degree, to the most effective degree, if it is absent of concern, diligent, and sacrificial prayer. We cannot afford to miss this relationship between prayer and mobilization of laborers po in this task, in this mission that we are on. Kaya kung nariyan pong inyong mga Biblia, inaanyayahan ko po kayo na buksan niyo po muli yan sa Lukas Kabanatang 10 as we continue our way through this passage. At may mga ilang bagay po sa passage na ito na napakahalaga para sa atin na nagtitiwala sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo who, who count ourselves as followers of Christ, who profess ourselves to be disciples of Christ. Una po, prayer fuels a missional strategy of sending rather than sensing. Sa passage po ito, ang sabi sa verse 1, that Jesus appoints 72. He pulls 72 together and He send them out. And he is very clear. Napakaliwanag po ng sinabi ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Sabi niya, His priority, here's your priority number one. As you go, before you go, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out others with you, behind you, in front of you, as part of this endeavor. Now, ano pong nais pong sabihin dito ng ating Panginoong Yesus Kristo? What Jesus does here is that He extends a strategy that he has living by and he has been using ever since day one ng kanya pong pagmiministeryo. Katunayan, there's a, nariyan pong isang napakaikling salita na kung babasahin ho natin 
ay hindi ho natin mapapansin o kaya ay papansinin. And that, in, 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 that word in verse 1, call our attention, that seemingly insignificant word, and that word is others. And it reminds us that this is now a new deal. This is not something that Jesus is just starting here in the last stage ng kanyang ministry. Ang sabi po doon, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others also. And that beacons us to see sa salita ng ating Panginoon Diyos, how this been done? Where has this been done? Samahan niyo po ako sa paglalakbay to put in rivers and go back to few verses like in Luke chapter 3, all the way to the beginning of the ministry of our Lord. Most of us would understand Jesus commissioning sa kanya pong pagmiministeri at paglilingkod to have taken place at His baptism right after the accounts of the ministry of John the Baptist. Si Lucas only gives us two verses on this event, but he brings something to the table to the other gospel writers na iniwan ito ng iba. O oh, marahil, hindi na nila sinama. Look at chapter 3, verse 31 of the Gospel of Luke. And it says, When all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on Him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. And this was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. In essence, this was the public sending out of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it took place in the context of prayer. Now turn to chapter 6 of Luke. Dahil dito po, makikita natin, Jesus ministers for a while and He does all kinds ng mga kamanghamanghang mga bagay, mga miraculous things na mga ginagawa niya, incredible things. But, mapapansin ho natin that it is just Him on mission. This assignment that has been given, Siya lang. But when you come to chapter 6 in verse 12, Luke tells us this. In these days, He went out to the mountain to do what? To pray. And all night, He continued in prayer to God. And they... and. and and when they came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named Apostle. Apostle means one sent, a messenger. One sent as a messenger or sent one. So, dito po, we got all of these chapters. Jesus had been commissioned. He's on mission. He's carrying out yung kanya pong assignment. But it is just him. Now, he enlists some other guys and he calls them one cent. And now, for a few chapters, makikita ho natin, ito pong mga naging alagad, tagasunod ng ating Panginoon Su Kristo, in the school of Christ, they were watching Him. They were learning from Him. They get a few tasks. Binibigyan sila ho ng trabaho ng ating Panginoon dito at dyan. So, sinisimula na po silang train ng ating Panginoong Jesus. But then we come to chapter 9. You see what's happening now. Jesus was commissioned, yes. He was sent out. He was in the context of prayer. And in the context of extended prayer, He enlists some other guys. He named them sent ones, messengers. And then He equips them. And now, He does what? He sends them out. And what did Jesus do? He's broadening the circle of involvement. Pinalalawak niya ho. It started with him in the venue of prayer, and he broadens the circle with his apostles in the venue of prayer, and now he sends them out, and now he's broadening behind them. We're not hindi ho binigay sa atin yung mga pangalan ng mga taong yan. Sa last paragraph ho ng chapter 9, 
there are three there were three potential guys na binigay po doon recruited and considering this di ho binigay din ang kanilang mga pangalan and then we come to chapter 10 na atin pong binasa kanina and guess what we find same thing jesus is broadening the circle he appointed 72 others part of this ever widening pagpapalawak ng tinatawag nating concentric circles of evangelism discipleship and mission he organized them he put them together in group of two for safety and for the verification ng kanila pong testimonia with with which to be the custom at ni lay down ni lay out yung strategy in the different places that they were going to go. And Jesus says this, by the way, don't even think of about doing this without praying. Wag niyong kakalimutan yan. That the Lord of the harvest would send others in addition to you. And so, meron po tayong dalawang bagay dito na makikita. You've got Jesus who is broadening the circle of involvement He's been following the same strategy at habang pinalalawak niya po ito, he does this with those people, the same thing that he was done here. He sends them out. It's all been undergirded, braced up, founded in, permeated by prayer. Talaga hong ito ay uh, puspos, balot no? ng panalangin. And now, he comes to this place with people whose name were not given, hindi ho binanggit kung sino-sino hu hu huyaan, who now represent a whole host, kabuan, ng generation, following, including this one right here in this church today of a name individuals who day in and day out are doing the exact thing that Jesus set in motion 2,000 years ago. And that is broadening the circle of sending one another out. And Jesus says, here's how you do it. You start with prayer. And I'm so blessed with our council members because we decided to spend just yung maglaan ho talaga spend time uh, we set one Saturday each month to really pray and seek God His direction, His leading for KBCF at napakaganda po na dun talaga natin pasimulan ang lahat now, you don't even think about doing this without prayer. And you come to these verses dito po sa ating binasa sa chapter 10. And you've got all of this sending language. He appointed them in verse 1. He sends them out in verse 1. And then in verse 2, he says, Call on the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. And verse 3 begins this way. Go your way to send, uh, be sent, and go do this. But right in the heart of it, Jesus says, pray. You see, what we have here, don't miss it now, praying and sending go together. Magkasama po yan. And I just want us to see the the strategy ng ating Panginoong Yesus was characterized by prayer. Pray for more laborers and then sends one another out. This is a sending mission and this sending mission is a fueled by prayer. Now, look at the second truth. Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscle of sovereignty. Alam po natin yung nerve, napakanipis lang ho niyan. Pero nagpapagalaw yan, kahit na ganun kanipis. Kaliit. 
Charles Spurgeon said, Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscle of omnipotence. Ito pong statement na ito, inaniniwala po ko, is right in tune with the scripture. In understanding ito pong balance na ito, this healthy balance between the omnipotence of God, that He is all-powerful, and yet, the human responsibility of prayer. And it is an acknowledgement that somehow, unbeknownst to us, minsan mahirap po sa atin na isipin ang misteryo pong ito, yung connection ito, because we don't manipulate God. We don't let Him what to do. Ang kanya pong gawain sa mundo pong ito is not dependent on us. But somehow, some way, when you read the pages of the scriptures, there is some relationship between our prayer and what God does in His effectual uh, in, in his effectualness in, in this world. Kung ano po yung kanyang ginagawa sa mundong ito. God is not only all-powerful, He is sovereign. He is in charge of everything. Look down at your Bible. You see it there in verse 2, who's telling us to pray for. He tells us to pray for the Lord of the harvest. That is a word that Jesus' listeners would understand to be a reference to the person who is in charge. The Lord of the harvest. He is over everything. He's in charge of all things harvest. We know who is in charge of everything. Sa context pong ito, right there, everything that has to do with the harvest. The sending, the planting, the kind of seed, the response on the part of the people. He's in charge of all that. And this idea of the harvest was an image na ginamit po noon pa sa parehong Old Testament and New Testament. It indicates readiness, kahandaan. Kaya pag pinag-usapan po natin that the harvest is ready, ano pong ibig sabihin yan? It's time to go get it. We don't have to wait for it. Sa katunayan, that underscored with the description in verse 2 where Jesus says, it, it is plentiful harvest. Sagana ang aanihin. Hindi ba that's so encouraging to us? Listen, we, we can always know that there's somebody out there that's going to say yes. Because the harvest is plentiful. Meron at meron po dyan sa kanto at lansangan, bawat kali at komunidad na magsasabing yes sa ating Panginoon Diyos. The, the idea that the harvest is plentiful, plentiful means it is always ready. Ready na. Naghihintay lang po sila. Yes, some, sometimes we, we plant. Yes, sometimes we actually see the harvest that is being reaped. But God would have us to know that the harvest is always plentiful. There are always people. John, sa kanto, sa kapitbahay natin, that is going to embrace the gospel and would say yes to Jesus. But then there is a reality check. Look down at your Bible. Same verse. But Jesus says, the laborers are few. Here's the deal. The harvest will always outnumber the laborers. This is the truth. Ito ang katotohanan ng ating pong gospel enterprise na ating pong sinasagawa. The task that we are on. This harvest will always overwhelm the size, the number of laborers. They are to go and reap this harvest. Kulang. Mga, kaya mga kapatid, naiintindihan nun natin to. You know this in your family as we carry out the circles. There are most lost people than saved people. Alam nyo yan sa inyong opisina, sa inyong mga katrabaho, the place you go. You count the number of people that are living for Jesus. They giving their lives to following Him or being His disciples. There are going to be more, uh, more lost people than 
they are saved. At totoo po yan dito sa Quezon City, sa Barangay Sacred Heart. Everywhere we go, this size of the task is so much bigger. And Jesus gives us this reality check to remind us of that reality. So ano po ang kanyang sinabi? He gives us the answer. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest. Napaka-interesting po ng language nito sa New Testament. The idea of praying earnestly means to be reduced to one. To lack for someone's self. And so, to make one's need known. That is, that, that is why ito po'y associated sa panalangin. And, and came to be used to describe prayer because ito po ay paglalarawan that someone cries out and makes his need known. And so, napakahalaga po na makita po natin na ito po ay parang kap, when, when, kapag sinabi ho dito na earnestly pray. Pinapaabot mo. Ito yung heart cry mo. Pinapaabot mo ang iyong pangangailangan. And Jesus takes that word. That's not the only word. Not even the common words na bihirang gamitin ho. Pero dito ho ginamit niya. Bakit? Because of the size of this harvest. Because of the size of this task. And he said, you look around and you see a harvest always outnumber the laborers. And ikaw mismo, mapapatunayan mo yan. We cannot keep up with this. There is no way that we can tackle this. There is no way that we can penetrate this. And so, you make your need known to the Lord of the harvest. How do we do that? How do we do that right here? We do that by challenging one another with personal evangelism. Praying for more people to be involved. More KBC first. Opening their mouth in sharing their faith so that our family members, our friends, our co-workers, our classmates, our neighbors, our communities can hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to do everything we can to extend that out and mobilize people in another area. Kaya mga kapatid, there's so much more in the size to be done. The overwhelming need that is out there for us to continue to mobilize and send. But to understand this, that we will never do it effectively and efficiently in the long haul without prayer. Are we a praying church? Bisitahin niyo po paminsan-minsan. O wag naman po minsan. Bumisita talaga kayo at sumali po kayo sa ating prayer meeting. Online na nga lang po yan eh. Hindi na nga po kayo maglalakbay dito. Makikiisa na lang po tayo sa panalangin. And I thank the Lord for the ministry of Kuya Cesar. Sa panalangin. Napaka sipag, napaka tiyaga na naghihikayat. Manalangin tayo. There are so many avenues in the church which we seek to mobilize people. That would not happen in a way that brings honor and glory sa ating Panginoon Diyos in most effectiveness without prayer. So what, we do, we, what, what do we pray for? We say it's simple as that. As we keep saying, ganun lang ba kadali yun? Lord, send out laborers. Pero, mas maganda na ho yung pasimula. But I want you to know that the Bible gives us more than that. You hold to your Bible there, and I want you to take a quick journey with me. 
And what I want to do is to show you ang ilang pong mga lugar sa, sa scriptures where the Bible makes this connection between prayer and the sending out of laborers. Now, what I want us to do, I want this to become a prayer strategy for us. And this is where we go to the scripture. At makita ho natin yung anong uri, yung mga bagay that people pray for in relation to, to, to mobilization of, of laborers. The first one is in Acts chapter 1. Because this is where Jesus gives us another picture of ever-widening circle. Yung strategy of sending people out. You remember the disciples in verses 4 and 5, na kung saan sinabi na ating Panginoon Jesus Christo, after the resurrection, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. And He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And then He tells them in, in, in verse 8, in Acts chapter 1, what's going to look like? What's going to happen when that takes place? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. There are those ever-widening circles right there. And Jesus said, this is the way it's going to happen. And then, watch this. They understood waiting to mean praying. And you see, verse 14, all this with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer. This is how they waited. This is how they did what Jesus said. And you know the rest of the story. Chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is poured out. The church is born. And this ever-widening circle continues. Nagpatuloy po yan. And now look at verse, uh, uh, chapter 4, I mean, in Acts. Remember, si, P si Pedro po at si, si Juan, in-interrogate to sila ng mga religious leaders. And they were opposing their, their teachings. And so, yung, yung, yung uh, attention at yung uh, uh, galit o sama ng loob, yung parang gano'n, ano, they, ito hong galit sila kay, kay Peter at kay John dahil sa kanila hong uh, pinoproclaim. And the disciples get some persecution and they go back to the church. And in verse 23 of chapter, tw of chapter 4, the church begins to pray. Then look at verse 31. And sabi ho dyan, And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. These people are all sent out. And they begin to proclaim the gospel of Christ born in the context of prayer. And finally, let me give this one to you. Let me say this to you, and I don't want you to miss this. Don't miss this. Verses 1 to 3 connects with the rest of this. And know this. Solicitors or prayers and are laborers. And laborers are solicitors or prayers on God's mission. You see, when we get to verse 3 of Luke chapter 10, God sends them out. And He says, Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of walls. And then we have all these practical instructions. We've got all the practical strategy. But watch this. It's come right on the heels of Jesus saying, Therefore, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out laborers in the harvest. What do we draw from that? There's a connection between this that pray and this that go. In fact, in this passage right here, they are the same people. I think sometimes we give ourselves passionately by kind of dividing this up and compartmentalizing it 
And we say, well, some of, some of us will pray and some of us will go. Ang iba mananalangin, ang iba ay hahayo. Dinidivide ho natin. Or we say, well, you know, God, give me a gift of praying. And other people have the gift of going. You know, the fact of the matter is that we know that all of us can give. All of us can pray. And maybe we should add to all that. All of us in some way, form, or passion can go. But in this passage, right here, at least the prayers were the goers. And the goers were the prayers. And we must understand that relationship. You know what another thing it does? It gives us something else to pray for us. We pray for laborers. I think that's what this strategy does. Pray for laborers who will do this. First, depend on Jesus completely. That's why he told them, don't take any of, of those stuff. The time is short. The task is urgent. You need to be able to move quickly. Principles depend on Jesus completely. And pray for laborers who don't waste time unnecessarily. And sabi niya, don't, don't greet anybody on the road. Why? Now, he was, he was not telling us to be rude. Oh, maging stabis tayo. He just knew the nature of the oriental greetings. They took a long time sometimes. You've got, kailangan mo siyang yakapin, kailangan mo siyang halikan, kabila ng pisngi. At pagkatapos nun, kwentuhan na. Ganun ang oriental greeting eh. So, mababalaho ka, kumbaga. So, Jesus said, urgency of the task. There's no time. It might be a word there for, for ito po'y maaaring maging paalaala po sa atin na mas marami pang ginugugol ng oras sa Facebook, sa Twitter, sa Instagram, sa YouTube. He said, this task is huge. How much time you spend on Facebook, on Twitter? And next, pray for laborers who discern openness to the gospel. That's why he said, find this person of peace. Stay there. Hang out. It, it's the principle of low-hanging fruit. Alam yung mga mababang prutas, mas madali nang pitasin. Ibig sabihin, ready na yan. Okay. So yung mga bukas na sa, sa, sa Ebanghelyo, yun na yun. We need people who are to, to discern that. And let's, let's pray for laborers who can discern that. Ito pong mga low-hanging fruit. The person of peace. And then, these are provision instead of luxury. Ang sabi po ng ating Panginoong Jesus, don't be looking for a better deal. You, you find somebody that will meet your needs. Hang out there. Sila ang mag, magpo-provide niyan sa'yo. Don't, don't be looking how to increase your convenience or your comfort zone. That's something we know. We need laborers who get that, who desire provision instead of luxury. And then demonstrate and share the gospel. That's why, ang sabi ng Panginoon, heal the sick, sign of the coming, uh, 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 sign of the coming kingdom. It was evident. And then speaking on, on to that, show the gospel and share the gospel. And then finally, declare God's impending judgment. Dahil alam ito ng ating Panginoong Jesus. The good news is not good news if it is not against the backdrop of the bad news. And that's the wrath of God that is coming against all sin. And we need to be clear about that. We need to be clear about that, mga kapatid. There are three truths that are added to this list, weaven throughout this passage. And let's pray for laborers to remember the sender of the servant is the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus says in verse 3, I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Hindi ba na parang napaka-weird nito? 
isesend tayo sa kalagitnaan ng mga wolves? Of course, to protect the people the sheep from the wolves, Jesus says, I am sending you. But the eyes is in the empathic position. Jesus said, don't forget, it's me that's sending you. Lord of the harvest, the great shepherd, ruler of the universe. I got your back here. Kasama mo ko. Kaya kung pinapahayo kita doon sa galagitnaan ng mga yan, kasama mo ko. And the rejection of the message is rejection of the master. And that's what he say in verse 16. He says, don't forget when they reject you, they really rejecting me. When they reject me, they rejecting the one that sent me. Hindi ho tayo ang nire-reject nila, kundi mismo ang Panginoon. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, you and I were one. We're together. I'm with you in this. Don't take this personally. Kasama mo ako dyan. And then finally, security in the Lord's trumps. Success in the labors. Verses 17 to 20. KBCF, we need to hear this. God has blessed us, has graced us with fruits. It is easy sometimes that we get caught up in the success of the labors. But you know in that paragraph, when the 72 returns, Jesus says, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. You've got success in your labors, but rejoice that your names were written in the book of life. Now, I know one of the reasons Jesus is doing that was to curb the danger of pride. Kasi pagka nagiging successful na, uy, dami na, ang ganda ng ginawa natin ministry doon ah, ayos yan ah. And then, pride creeps in. And so, paalala ng Panginoon, can I tell you why I think the primary reason he gives us the story? It is because alam niya, alam na Panginoon, that in every mission story would not end like that. Every day at the end of the day won't have a happy ending when we are sheep among wolves. And sometimes, very discouraging. Hindi ho ba? And Jesus says, I want you to know that what's going to carry you na magpapatuloy ka is not going to be your rejoicing in the success of this mission, of this task. But when you put your head in the pillow at night, the thing that is going to carry you is that you are still secure in the arms of the Savior. And Jesus tells these disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest. And I have a question to you. Are you praying for laborers to go out into the harvest? Is that a standard prayer of yours, of KVCF? Jesus is saying that his disciples ought to pray for laborers to go out into the harvest field. And I, and I simply ask you, are you praying for that? Is that something that's very important to you? What excites your energy and your passions? What is important to KBCF? Well, one of the things that Jesus says excites the attention and the energy and the passion of his followers, of his disciples, is looking out a, at, at, at the field that is white for harvest and recognizing that there's not enough laborers to bring in that harvest. And let's be honest. We all pray for the things that matter to most of us, di ba? Kung ano yung mahalaga po sa atin. We pray often sa ating mga anak, sa ating asawa, sa ating pamilya, because they matter greatly to us. Hindi yun naman humasama yun, di ba? Tama naman po yun. I pray for my wife because she matters greatly to me. And if you get sick, you pray for your health because that matters to you. 
If we are in financial difficulty or need a job, we pray earnestly for those needs because those, those things matter to us. But the most important question is this. Does the Lord's harvest matter enough to you to motivate you to pray often for it? If a person's response to the gospel is the deciding factor where he or she will spend eternity, should we do not all that we can to get this crucial message to them? The gospel is crucial because people will be judged eternally on the basis of their response to it. If you know that fact, pray for the harvest and for more workers. And in light of eternity, the gospel is crucial. The gospel is the crucial message. We are the messengers. We are the laborers. We are the prayers. We are to be disciple-making disciples that we go out and proclaim His word in order that others will follow Jesus. Have you thought about the fact that there are hundreds of thousand people in Quezon City, in our country, that has never heard the name of Jesus Christ and they never heard the gospel and has that burdened you? And has it led you to pray for laborers to go out? Mga kapatid, that ought to be one of the things that burdening us as a church. That we are passionate about. That's on our minds and that we are praying for. Have you prayed? Are you praying for laborers? And so to be obedient, we pray, Lord, send out workers into your harvest field. Heavenly Father, thank you for this reminder of our need to have a heart of compassion, a heart that Christ has had toward the lost, headed for the harvest, that we need to pray Plead with you to send out messengers. That we need to have a sense of urgency that dispatches us immediately to evangelize, Panginoon. Dalahin namin, Panginoon, that you will make out of this church a great force of laborers into the harvest. Whatever the cause, Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. Not only that we would understand your word, but that our desires would be set on the things of Christ and the things of the gospel. And we need your spirit to apply your word to our own hearts, our own circumstances, our own situation. So do this, we pray, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.